So what does this projective space have to do with elliptic curve cryptography? Well, we can do elliptic curve cryptography and elliptic curves on projective space. So this is a curve as we have seen it before and it's on a plane. So we have an X and a Y coordinate. Well, now, as mentioned in the last video, we can define a projective space for this plane and we can convert points of X and Y to points in the projective space by just saying, putting the Z coordinate to one, because if you remember, we've put this plane at Z one. So now we still have this curve on the plane, but around it, we have this projective space, right? And all lines that go through the origin through a point have equivalent points in the projective space. So in projective space, our curve, curve equation is actually a bit different, as you can see here, but that's not important for our use case at the moment. But turns out all points on the plane z equals 1 have equivalent points in the projective space, as I've mentioned earlier. So this point here is on the plane, on the curve maybe, but all other points that are also on this line are actually projectively equivalent to this point on the plane, on the curve. So all the points actually also lie in the plane, except for a weird bunch of points. So there are points that are parallel on a line that is parallel to the plane. Turns out all points that are have z equals zero, so the line is parallel to the plane, have the form zero, a number zero. So they all have zero x value and a zero z value and some y value. These points are part of the curve because they fulfill the equation, but they're not on the plane. So this equivalence class of points, zero something zero, doesn't have an equivalent on the plane because it never crosses the plane. Well, this point, or actually the equivalence class of points on this line is the point at infinity. So the point at infinity does exist when we look at projective spaces. It does exist, but it's not in the plane where the curve lies. So that's why if we work with affine coordinates, we have to deal it as a special case that's somewhere else. So, if we want to turn our affine coordinates, x and y, to projective space, we can do that just by setting z to 1. And if we want to go from projective space back to affine space, we have to divide our x and y coordinates by z, yeah, multiply it by the inverse of z, which makes sense because we if you remember, we had that the equivalence relation is that all points are equivalent if we can write a number lambda here that scales this point. So in this case, this is the inverse of z that we scale this point with. And the inverse of z times z is of course 1. And then we have a point that lies on the affine plane 1, but at the same time has x and y coordinates, 
and then we're back in the FN space. And please keep in mind that putting the F in uh, putting the the F in plane sorry the plane the Ebene at Z equals one is an arbitrary choice. You could also put it somewhere else. Just Z equals one is a common choice and makes life easier sometimes. <laughs>